Hey everybody, if you're here, hang out a second. I just gotta do a couple things. This is not entirely planned. And I'm out of practice. So, enjoy a little bit of a track. If you log in, say hey. This is actually... <laughs> hey Tom. Um, this is one of the new backing tracks. Hang on a second here. I'll put the link for this one. I did a bunch of these new ones. Well, not a bunch, but I did uh, a few. Hey Charles. Um, I don't want to comment on my own thing here. Can I comment? Oh, you're kidding me. Alright, I feel like kind of a dummy because I'm not entirely certain how to, how to do this. Can you guys hear everything okay? How the guitar? Backing tracks are in the. Um, comfortable uh how are you guys doing because i got three of you on here um today is not really a um a normal live show i just haven't done one of these in a long time i kind of wanted to try it i've got some stuff kind of going on uh in the near future i would like to be able to live stream so i'm just kind of running a test here uh i also have a kind of a lesson a major scale lesson that i want to uh try out here it's about kind of getting it under your fingers all over the fretboard in smaller chunks so we're gonna talk about that a little bit um, in any event, uh, how have you guys been doing? It's been the holiday. It's been a weird holiday. That's actually, uh, my crunch here. Actually, we'll give you guys a little bit of, uh, whoops. So pedal board today is my small pedal board. Make me see sick to look at. This is the, the board I just put together for every gig that's not a big rock gig. This is my, uh, actually working. So uh, here's the amp. This is just the amp without any kind of. Actually, maybe I can. Um. 
Um, and then I really like this reverb. It's, uh, you know, I'm playing through a, a vintage deluxe reverb here, um, but the reverb sucks on the amp. <laughs> so I'm literally um, uh, using this this J Rocket reverb. Your family still talks to you. Is, was that in doubt, Tom? Was that going to be a... a <laughs> So that's that's kind of the first part of the sound. I really uh, really like this reverb. It's literally what the reverb in the amp is supposed to be. Um, and you have as little or as much as you need. I've kind of been using it a lot. Um, even just having that versus. That's kind of nice. Although I've been trying to. About halfway up. So the that basically it's a one knob reverb. It, um, it's a digital version of a tank. I like it. Um, oh yeah, I actually don't. Um, well, it's not really my favorite thing in the world, but I do kind of need it. Um, this since we're doing all of this today, this is just the uh, Crybaby Classic. Basil, whatever they call it. Um, and actually, uh, you know, I haven't had a crybaby really in many years because I had one in the 80s and it was so bad that I quit using them. <laughs> and I've been using Vox and Full Tone. And then I bought a, a, a mini one recently and I like the sound of that a lot. Uh, so this one, this one I actually really like. Um, I don't have it on the board uh, because I uh, I still have to use my big board, which is back behind me. You can kind of see. Um, I still have to use that, and I don't really want to have that real estate on the board taken up by the wah pedal. Um, and I don't want to buy two of them. So, so this one's cool. Sounds like a wah pedal. If I want to, you know. So, so that's the deal with the wah pedal. The funny thing is, though, is that I've got the, the Eventide H9, and if I could find it, I actually don't need this wah because um, not not as good. Right, but I can use the expression pedal for the H9. If I, so if I had to, I could I could use the wands. But not nearly as cool as the crybaby. I guess if I So, um as far as the other stuff, um the Wah or an amp and sim pedal here. Um, so I've actually got a, a Strymon Iridium on my on my large pedal board. Uh, that's just kind of really for backups. Um, uh, I was trying to use it in place of a microphone on gigs, and I really hated it. So I've kind of changed uh, uh, changed what I use it for. I still use the microphone, um, but it's there in case of emergencies because sometimes I blow things up and. I just, with the idea that I'm, I'm kind of going back to playing gigs here pretty soon, I kind of wanted to have a smaller board that I could do everything that wasn't like a big rock show with, because I do like blues stuff, and I do the reggae band, um, I have a, a fusion thing coming up that I'm really looking forward to, um, and this would actually cover that very, very well. Having the H9 here, the Eventide H9, does a lot of things for me, because it, um, like there's the wall, kind of go through all the sounds in the H9 here. Um, so this is the, the phaser. Uh, I can actually, oops, let me. Believe it or not, that phaser sucks. So that's the one sound I don't like. So I've actually got my regular MXR. This one I really do like. 
And I love that you just... So I still use that, but that's the only modulation on the board that doesn't come out of the H9. Um, I've got chorus on here. There's a couple choruses actually. I don't really love chorus, but I end up having to use it quite a bit. Um, so that works pretty good. Um, oops. The phaser, oops. I'm still getting the hang of this thing. Did I screw this up? I think I screwed it up. Awesome. Um, <laughs> Alright, so I got this auxiliary button here, and it's supposed to, um, actually I'm just going to change it on the iPad. The auxiliary button's supposed to give me extra buttons, and uh, it works, but uh, I have problems sometimes with it, it's kind of a drag. That is true. Uh, you know, you can't. Purple Rain's... And he uses... Um, is one of those Dimension D pedals or something like that? Let me make sure I'm on the right device here. And how are you doing, David? Actually, I wonder if I can... Well... a little bit here so this is the i've actually got two ipads going on this is the ipad for the h9 um if i wanted to oh man well there it goes that's going the right way I messed something up. I got to fix now. Um, so this is the Leslie. Nice things with the. Uh, I don't have this set up on the big board, but if I wanted to control the Leslie, the rotary sound. It's good, David. All all recording t stuff. You can even see. Actually, I'll, I'll bring this down. Maybe I can set this. Where you can see it. This is not a well planned out joint here. Oops. Yeah, it's just going to end up falling. But you, well, you can't see that either. Anyway, the nice thing is with the iPad, you can control everything. I like having it there. Uh, but the rotary speaker. Um, I've got a slap echo on here if I want to play rockabilly stuff. So that's cool. Um, <laughs> this actually, it's the um, the Eventide doubling thing that Eddie Van Halen would use on the like the '80s albums, uh, the micro pitch or whatever. So here's the, the so there's the sound of the guitar. There's with the uh, right. I didn't realize like how much of that could be done. Um, wasn't really the amp. <laughs> All that stuff I remember from my childhood. Um, also, I'll play some wild. nice because that that pitch thing even though it's a little cheesy 80s sounding you kind of hear where uh eddie gets um 
and he gets the depth in that sound. <laughs> I'm literally, I'm just playing one pedal and I've got that thing. I could probably bring up some of the gain on the dude. So that that's kind of neat. I really don't have any use for that on the gigs I play. I, just, I love messing with that. Um, other sounds, you know, it's got tremolo. That works pretty good. Once again, if I needed to, I could control the rate here with that. And there's one, I can actually slow it down to the, the lowest value of the rate and then bring it back. I don't know if I'd ever use that option. Uh, other sounds, there's my favorite synth sound. Um, we play uh, that Bobby Brown song on one of my gigs. And uh, I love using the, the synth for that. So actually, for David, let me, uh, if you guys want to, David, go ahead and put your the link for your channel here in the chat. Uh, that way people can uh, subscribe. Anyway. But I really love, that's one of the things I always loved about the H9. Um, <laughs> That guy. I got some other. Oh, I've got this. Um, the harmony thing. So I, I like that. Um, I've never really gotten a chance to to use it. Um, on a gig where it really made sense. Uh, we do, uh, let's see. I'll do it without. We do, uh, And Your Bird Can Sing by the Beatles. Uh, I don't remember anymore. But it's got to be all all harmonized, you know. It's it's a three guitar harmony, I think, and I've got it kind of. Right, and what I'm thinking is that I'm going to try and work it out, and I haven't worked it out yet. Where I'm using the harmonizer instead. Um, I don't just, I don't have it right yet. Anyway, it probably won't work uh, because the intervals aren't strictly in one key. Uh, but I'm gonna give it a try. Let's see. It would be nice if I could do that and actually have it sound right, as opposed to just this crunchy mess of things that I always play. But that, that song itself. Uh, <laughs> It's not exactly Beatlesy when I play it, but uh, I like it. That, the other song that we used to play, which I kind of want to bring back now that we're coming back to playing gigs, is that uh, And Your Bird Can Sing, or not, uh, She Said, She Said. Um, I used to sing that one a long time ago, and I, I heard it, a recording, and I was like, you know what, I really want to be able to, to do that one again. And that one's kind of fun because I, I stole some of the guitar parts from the... Uh, government mule version just uh, uh just to make it work for a trio so we'll see anyway um, like probably a lot of people i watched that get back documentary and really ended up enjoying uh, the beatles again <laughs> and wanting to play them so anyway so that's um that's that i don't know what else i got here in the h9 um <laughs> more 80s chorus this is like that original h or the 949 or whatever that even tide sound was um 
I think that's the one I've got on right now. Yeah, the nine ten. But it sounds it sounds sounds very eighties. Um, I don't even remember. All, oh, so if I needed to, uh, you know. Um, That's like one of those delay sounds, and it's it's the whole like quarter and dotted eighth the sound put together that the edge does. But then there's also songs that I have to play like um, that uh, "Shut Up and Dance" song. Actually, let me, let me do this. You can't really see the guitar very well, but hey, Tom, how's it going? Tom Straley, everybody. I kind of like this, you know, it's basically, there's no, it's just the amp. And then the delay out of the H9 and the reverb. I, I like that sound quite a bit. Uh, good, good, good. I saw Tom's channel just crossed 100,000, uh, viewers actually this week which is our subscribers which is pretty cool and tom's got a great channel he does all kinds of week uh weekly uh, our daily live streams or frequent live streams of lessons and all kinds of great studio things so subscribe to tom straley too um anyway but no so the h9 I, this is actually the second h9 that i've bought i still have one in my um uh in my big board too yeah, Tom, it's it's a slow go unless you're, you know, unless you're a girl playing uh, Ingve tunes. <laughs> you know, if, if you're a girl playing guitar, wearing funky clothes, the, those those girls generally tend to get subscribers really quick. Um, guys that have really good um, career histories, they, they do really good, whether it's touring or whatever. Um, kids, <laughs> magic kids, um, old guys like us, it takes a while though. <laughs> and then I started over again. So, you know, this is, I'm actually wearing shoes today. You, you know, usually I don't wear shoes when I'm out here. <laughs> I've gotten busted for wearing socks on, on camera. So anyway, but that's, I don't, oh, oh, okay. So this thing also, I didn't realize this until I got the second one. That's the fuzz out of the H9. Probably not a fuzz that people that love fuzz want to use. I didn't realize I could get dirt out of this thing. Hey Tom, which video was it? So you can get a little a little sludgy with uh, with the H9, which is kind of neat. That's another Van Halen sound. Uh, anyway, but that's, that's you know I don't have too much programmed in here, but I have like all the basic modulation that I would need, um, and the one specific delay. Um, I always like the El El Capistan, just kind of set up almost ambient. So you barely hear it. Oh dang! Yeah, I can see how that that video could do really well. Actually, y'all can search on YouTube for Tom and that video. But I love this El Capistan, and I especially love the fact that I can tap tempo with it. Uh, if you hear it. I just like having that, and then if I'm... So I can clean rhythm. That's just the, uh, 
the blue note. I kind of use that like most people I think would use that, like a con kind of pedal. And on my other pedal board, I've, I've got the, the Archer. Um, I just use it for... And then the pedal that it, for some reason um, does the least, but I like the most, is this stupid M drive I've had for a while. Um, just pushing the amp with that. That's my favorite, actually. Uh, it's just a little too clean for a lot of stuff. Distorting everything? That might be a little bit loud. Turn that back a little bit. But and the pedals stack, although I don't I'm not really that much of a stacking guy. I can get kind of a, you know, that whole A.D. Satriani thing if I combine those two guys. Honestly, it's getting to the point where I could almost do my cover gig with this pedal board. Um, there's a couple complicated sounds that um, I'd be tap dancing a bunch, but I mean, I'm kind of getting to that point where I... I don't know if I really need all the big stuff. So, anyway, so that is, that's kind of what's going on with the little pedal board. If you guys have questions, you know, put them in there. So, I'm going to grab some coffee. Thanks, Tom. You know, uh, it, it's kind of funny because I'm doing this today. I actually have on order. I'm finally, um, this goes back to um, Tom Moser's comment about me and, and digital stuff. I finally ordered a, um, a uh, what do you call it? Um, Fractal FM3, like the little mini Axe Effects thing. For cover gigs, honestly, um, I try and play this as much as possible because I love this guitar which is not a very special or expensive instrument. It's it's like a, a 60th anniversary, but it's the cheapest made anniversary guitar ever. It's like a, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's an American standard, basically. Um, and then I've got my Les Paul, which isn't out here right now. Um, I get a, a huge amount of mileage out of that. Um, actually, I did a jazz gig with the Les Paul. I left my arch top at home on uh, last week and I, um, I I did a gig and uh, really just with this rig and the Les Paul I actually got a really nice jazz sound um, but I actually use that for more of the rock and stuff like the one band I play in the first set set and a half is kind of classic rock and 80s stuff and with these pedals and my big pedal board has most of these pedals also so I can kind of get these sounds that you're hearing with the big pedal board but through the sur amp um, so I get a lot of mileage out of this guitar. The bridge pickup on this is, is, you know, and it's just, I think it's a Tex-Mex pickup. It's not like a fancy one, but it's kind of beefy. Um, so I got that and the Les Paul. Um, and then one of the bands I play in plays a half step down sometimes. Um. Or has one set, I should say, that's a half step down. So I've been using this guitar uh, for an hour a night in that band. And this is uh, just a PRS um, Standard 22. Uh, but it's got Railhammer pickups in it. 
Yeah, no, it's it's not a Mexican telly, um, but it's not it's not a fancy one either. Um, so this this guitar, it's kind of funny because I really loved how it played, and it was like the most resonant Paul Reed Smith I had ever picked up. Um, and I was actually shopping for a 335 and couldn't find one I liked. Um, but I hated the pickups because this was the it's like the cheapest American one that they make. So it actually had the Korean pickups in it, I think. And I, and I hated those. Um, so a friend of mine who works at Railhammer said, Hey, uh, if you make a video, we'll send you a set of pickups to try. So these are the, the Railhammer. Um, it's, the, it's like their version of a PAF. And then their version of a P90. But it, the P90 part is because it's a split where it's got the, uh, the rail and the slugs. It's basically like two pickups. So it's noiseless it doesn't have any of that you would love this one tom because it's it's just basically a piece of mahogany it's like a les paul jr or something like that um this guitar has got 11s on it um i thought hey if i'm tuning down i kind of want to have the um the bigness of it i'm i don't know if i really like that or not but it sounds huge on gigs <laughs> strings are also very old <laughs> um, so I get away with a lot of stuff on this guitar um, ooh. McCarty I love I, I oh really I would love to have it one of those Dave Grissom guitars I think that's the PRS that I would really love to have I just I I can't afford any more expensive guitars and I don't really I've kind of discovered I don't really need them. What's that? Uh, I got a So anyway, so this guitar has kind of been, thanks AJ, um, this guitar has kind of become this weird, I only, I couldn't live without it, I just barely play it, <laughs> you know, I, I just don't want to, uh, uh, you know, it's nice, it's got the humbucker and the bridge and the kind of the single coil in the neck, so I can, I can play all kinds of music with it on the cover gig. What do I do, um, whoops. A second here. So like So it does that kind of thing really well. Um Yeah, it's it's kind of gnarly. But the the thing I kind of discovered is that the rail hammers have this like there's a little extra brightness that I don't normally like in other pickups, but for this guitar, it's like perfect. It, it, it cuts really good. So, it's it's the, the guitar. I don't <laughs> I don't I don't pick it up to play because I love playing it, but I end up using it on gigs and it sounds great. So I'm I'm real happy with it. The 24, I've never really gotten along with a, a 24 fret neck. And part of it is because I have giant meat hooks for hands. So it doesn't, um, you know, it, it's a bit of a challenge for me to, to even on this guitar, get to the 22nd fret. So, or if I have to do, um, let's see, um. This is such a hard song for me to play, right? Because I, getting my hands up in that position. And that guy plays all kinds of really cool, like, um, but see, I'm already bending stuff. Actually that one, uh, I could probably do it in the original key. Because it's tuned down to half step. But then, um...
that chord. <laughs> Works really good for that. This guitar is a little bit easier, but it's hard for me to play up in the, the upper registers, you know, um, on a 24 fret neck. Everything's just real close. So, um, but that's that's this guitar. I, I literally, I'm just kind of breaking all my stuff out and trying to get it, um, make sure it all still works. Because I, in not this week, but next week, I actually start playing live shows again, just in time for Omicron. So. Yeah, I wish I would love to have an SG. That's like one of those things that um, I, I've got this wish list, and it's it's weird. It's it's uh, it's SG. I really want a flying like a a Karina flying V, which is impossible to get uh, without spending many many thousands of dollars. Um, I just got this wacky wish list of guitars, and I, and <laughs> I just can't justify spending the money on it on that stuff. But the SG is like one of those things. It seems like it'd be real practical for me sometimes. Um, so maybe maybe in the near future. Um, and then, like everyone else, I watched Get Back. I mentioned this earlier, and uh, I'm watching John play that Casino, and I was. Oh man, I had the opportunity to buy a '72 or a '73 about 15 years ago for $500 and I didn't and um, I regret that <laughs> uh, it wasn't really the best guitar um, but I probably should have bought it and then traded it up into something else it, it was it was an opportunity I shouldn't have passed up um, I just, you know but I would I would love to get a, a decent one even like one of those like the 1962 reissue ones I've had students with those that I really like um, they don't necessarily have to be vintage for me, as long as they I like how they sound and they're real resonant. Hey AJ, what part of uh, India are you from? I'm always curious, like where people are from when they check in on this. Oh, that's part of the reason why. <laughs> but honestly, you know, I I would. Oh yeah. But you know what? Isn't that like how most most session guys like buy? nice vintage or not vintage guitars but like good vintage guitars you end up buying stuff that people have wrecked headstock repairs and things like that haryana india very cool um i don't know i just uh i'm not really hey david i'm not really in a position to buy a whole bunch of stuff um but man that would be that would be there I don't know, but I, I like this guitar. I just, let me go back, go back to my tell You know what guitar I have here? Um, speaking of, of um, things that don't get played very often, I've always, uh, a friend of mine sent this to me. He builds these guitars. Um, they're called King Hat guitars. Oh, antiquities are the best. I've got those in my Strat, in my, uh, my Tokai Strat. Actually, I did a couple videos on them and, uh, I'm thinking I've got a uh, one of those reissue '70s Tele Deluxes, and um, I, I really can't stand the Cunefi pickups. Like I've got the the, the Fender Cunefi, so I was thinking of actually getting a set of Antiquities and putting them in there. So I had like a humbucker Tele. Um, so this guitar, I think, is the coolest looking guitar ever. I love how this guitar looks. It's got everything I, I, I want it to be. It's got a, a roasted maple neck. Uh, it's got a uh, stainless steel frets. It plays really good. Um, but what I don't like about it is it's got these Palmer pickups in it. And uh, it actually records decently. And it's got one of these gold foil pickups, which, which I've really been intrigued. So at some point, I would, um, if I go back to playing blues gigs more regularly, I'm going to kind of look for uh, just a, a set of pickups I like more. Because the guitar itself is really cool. Uh, he did a really good job on it. Uh, it plays really good. It's super solid. Um, between the stainless steel frets and the roasted maple neck, um, nothing ever changes on it, you know. 
And I think it's a mahogany. I don't know what the body is, but I think it's mahogany. Um, and it's got a decent bridge, Glendale Bridge. <laughs> hey, David. All right, man. Have a good night. Um, but it, it doesn't, uh, you know, if I record with it, I like it. That would be sun. I would love to have a couple of older uh, arch ups. I had a 1960 Epiphone uh, Century, um, but someone it, it just had a neck. It was supposed to be a P90, but someone had actually uh, someone had stolen the original pickups out. I didn't realize it. One of the local guitar guys has assured me it was all original, and um, but it had some some cheap knock on. And I, I just you know didn't get along with it that much but i would love to have something like that or like one of those k guitars like total western swing kind of deals start playing this more um i don't know i mean you got your major food groups you got your your humbuckers all the variety you know and the paf the high output stuff you got the the fender single coil strat telly uh, you've got the p90 p100 that kind of thing um you got gold foils um, you've got the, um, what do you call them that, that TB Jones does the, um, you see them in, in, uh, Gretsch guitars. I can't think of the name right now. Um, and there's like kind of the, um, like those Les Pauls that Les Paul had. Um, yeah, mini humbuckers. Um, uh, you've got the, what are they, low impedance. Uh, the, the ones that Les Paul had on his 70s Les Pauls, the, the big ones with all the controls. Lipstick tube, yeah. That's that's something I don't own that I really would like to have. Is, uh, my, Scott Francisco, he's got a, a, a lipstick tube Telecaster that I used on my album for some stuff. I've always liked that guitar. Um, but there's, I mean, you know, if you, honestly, if you had a Strat, a Tele, and a Les Paul, you'd get through most of your day. The no, the 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 neck Tele is it's it's. Uh, it's just that it's the, the the Telecaster deck pickup that Fender came up with the the lipstick tube one. They're in. Um, oh, technically, you know, I don't know. Is it? I don't know. You've just stumped me, as far as this here. Um, or maybe it's something similar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, now I, um, uh, now I'm confused. Yeah, those, those are, are great. You know, I, I'm bummed. I had, um, I dropped a slide earlier today and broke it all over the place. But, like, this guitar is kind of cool for that, you know. pickup i'm it's got that kind of cheap kind of cheap guitar vibe for that sort of thing but it's not the same as the lipstick tube thing 
There's something about playing slide on cheap guitars that's really cool. I just... guitar I have that kind of lives out here in the garage um, everything else kind of stays in the house so the strings on this one get kind of nasty even when I don't play it very often this might be the first time I've played this guitar through this amp <laughs> now that I think about it maybe I was missing the uh comes to the rescue. Have you seen my uh, uh, my Guild uh, X500? That guitar, it's got the, the original Guild pickups in it. They're gold-plated. Part of me just wants to try, like, putting some Lawlers in it or something. I just, uh, it makes me nervous because the guitar is like 50 years old, so I, I don't really want to mess with it too much. But it needs to have all the, all, like, all the wiring and the pots. Everything's just, like, noisy and kind of, you know, it's all original. Oh... Uh, if I do this again, I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember to bring it out. Um, it's a cool guitar. I, I, I love it acoustically. I hate plugging it in. Uh, you know, I, I bought it based on how it played and sounded acoustically, which is pretty cool. But, um, but man, playing jazz amplified through that thing just kind of bites. Um, that's why I ended up using my Les Paul. Or maybe I'm just not a good arch top guy. Oh yes, it is. That that's the 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 only arch top I own. Um. Yeah, it, it depends on the on the guitar. Some of the guitars I don't I don't really mess with. Um. Some of them have just kind of, um, I've had long enough that they've kind of fallen apart. <laughs> um, my Les Paul's just got a Duncan 59 in, in the neck instead of the stock pickup because the stock neck pickup was kind of crappy sounding. Um, my Tokai, very little of its original, the Strat. Um, yeah, I like swapping pickups out now that I think about it. I struggle with really narrow, narrow neck Gibsons, like the 60 era Gibsons. My friend Tom Harkenrider had, um, he had a 330 and some other stuff, and they were really cool guitars, uh, but I just, I had such a hard time because the necks were so small. Is it a, like, what year Les Paul is it? Epiphones sometimes. Sometimes I hear people play sound real good on those. Um, the other guitar that's inexpensive that I hear people sound real good on uh, Eastman's. Um, I have a student with a, a 
the D'Angelico. Like one of the, the $800 or $1,000 ones. That sounds really cool, too. But I would love to have a, 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 a real 335. I can just... I can never afford the ones that I like. Oh, man. I had a... Um, I had a 1980 Les Paul, but the neck went bad on it uh, when I was like 19. Yeah, the, like the 50s D'Angelicos. I mean, those are like those are like master instruments, from what I remember. Um, and then the, now it's just a, a name that a company makes, you know, overseas. And, and they're they're fine guitars, but they're not like that's like Epiphone. You know, versus like a 50s or a 60s Epiphone. You know, they're just, you know, Epiphone used to be a great company that rivaled Gibson, you know, in some regards. And then Gibson bought it and turned it into, uh, yeah, see, I would love to have a casino. Now, watching Get Back, I almost, I was at Guitar Center with my son last week. We were killing time before uh, we went to go see Spider Man. And uh, they had an Epiphone casino, like, and it was, under seven hundred dollars, and I, I kind of liked it a lot. <laughs> isn't, isn't it funny how this happens? You, you buy stuff thinking, oh, "I'm going to use this," and then uh, you end up not using it, but <laughs> you end up liking it enough that you keep it. If you own it, you should play it. You should get it. Seriously. Hey Tom, how much live playing have you been doing recently? Here's a, a question for you. Um, I, uh, I've not been playing very much. I subbed out all my main gigs during COVID. And I was just taking the occasional outdoor thing. Um, and then, um, you know, about three, four weeks ago, uh, I was asked if I wanted my gig back. And I said, yeah, because, hey, everyone's vaccinated and everything's been, uh, um, numbers have been looking really good around here and then literally like the next day they they announced this whole omicron thing <laughs> and uh you know i'm vaccinated and boosted i you know i wear a mask i even have one of those coral masks so i can sing through the mask but uh i'm i just spoke to my brother in connecticut this morning he was talking about how messed up things are there already so i was just kind of curious i saw you had posted a thing on facebook about uh um <coughs> a church gig that you had done and i just saw there's just full of people i was like oh maybe tom's got some insight i don't know I, i'm i'm a little uh little nervous but i obligated myself right before everything turned turned crappy again so i'm really looking forward to playing though i really miss it yeah as um, at the church gig, they, they follow like COVID protocols and people have been staying healthy and stuff. My friend Tyler got really sick on his church gig. Like somebody just came in and, you know, basically got an entire band last Christmas, like with, with orchestra and everything was sick because they knew they were, they, they knew they were, they had COVID, they're symptomatic and they came in and they still sang uh, a whole weekend. <laughs> I hope so. We'll see. I don't know. This might be the shortest lived comeback. Plus, I'm not playing churches. I'm playing in bars mostly. So. see my uh my stepbrother lives up in northern california and he knows a number of, a bunch of people that have had it multiple times um 
So, but I, I'm vaccinated enough, and my family's all vaccinated as much as they can be. Where apparently at this point, it looks like it's you know you, you're not going to get hospitalized or hurt too bad. So we'll see. Anyway, I was just curious. <laughs> I had a, um, the year that they went to no smoking in California, I had a gig in a bar. I played New Year's Eve. It was the last night you could legally smoke in a bar in California. And I remember it was the typical, like, you know, four hours and you get home and all your gear smells bad and you smell, you know, like cigarette smoke and, um, I was coughing, you know, felt crummy. And then, um. I played the same bar like three nights later and I didn't even think anything about it. Uh, but I'm like, man, I feel great after this whole, I just played a whole night, you know? And then I re realized there was like no cloud of cigarette smoke in the, in the bar. I, I never really realized how much it was, you know, a thing. Still can smoke in bars. And that is crazy to me. But, um, no, that, you know, it's fine. There's one place I played that is, is it's rather, um, it's kind of a gross place. Um, I generally uh, take my shoes off. Like, I, I, I don't even wear my gig shoes into the house when I come home. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I kind of miss it. I, I've barely played for two years, you know. You know, part of the reason why I wanted to do some live streaming is basically to to start playing for people again because my chops are like kind of a mess. So anyway, um, I was going to do a lesson here, but I kind of, oh yeah, the smoky clubs I can do without. Um, but uh, I might save that for another time. Hey, Tom, when you do lessons, are, um, do you do them in the mornings still, or do you do them in the evenings, like, Ameri uh, you know, North American times? YouTube basically tells me that most of my subscribers and viewers are on, like, it's between 6 and 8 a.m. <laughs> during the week. 9 a.m., I don't know. Maybe I'll try that. I'll do it. I don't know. I just haven't figured out what I want to do with this whole YouTube thing, because it's... Um, everybody's doing everything, you know. I, I like to teach stuff. I like to play. Um, it just seems like the world's so crammed full of, of guys playing really good stuff and doing really good demos and things. But take requests. I might do that. Maybe I'll, you know, especially right now. Uh, I'm off from the conservatory for a couple weeks more. Maybe I'll try kind of doing what you, what you did and. Just kind of have a, a regular thing for a few days or a few weeks and kind of see what happens. Really? Okay. Interesting. All right. Maybe I'll try that. Maybe I'll do that for a while. So, all right, guys. Um, I'm probably going to go eat some dinner before I have uh, some paying students. Uh, but what I will do then um, is I'll probably, I've got uh, kind of a new fretboard a way of teaching fretboard stuff that I, I, I kind of want to try out. I've been using it at the conservatory with the kids, two reaction videos. Um, thank you, David. Maybe <laughs> I've got one, one, uh, one spicy food uh, video on my old channel. Um, so maybe I'll do that next. Um, maybe next Monday, I, I'm supposed to get my fractal, the FM three next week. I was kind of thinking about doing Kind of an unboxing slash Neanderthal guitar player tries to use digital modeling stuff live stream. I thought that might be kind of fun to see how quickly I could actually get usable sounds out of it. Um, we'll see. Hey, Tom, when you play at your church, what do you do for amplification? That's a good question for you. If anyone bored and wants to drink coffee out of a, a Jack mug, we, we've got a gift shop on the website.
David, are you saying it'd be cool to do the, the morning lesson thing or the request thing or? So the Lexicon rig has a, like a preamp or a, um, like a direct amp or something like that in it. I'm trying to remember, I, I seem to recall you talking about that. I just, most of my friends that play church gigs talk about the fact that they all have like, oh, the unboxing. Yeah, I'll probably do something like that. It'll be kind of fun to watch me fumble. I, I've, I've actually kind of re, um, reconfigured uh, the space over here. I moved my interface, my, my fancy interface here. Uh, I'm put the FM3 here so that I can actually plug into it for most of my um, recording. Uh, just so I can do bass and guitar real quick. Oh, okay. Yeah, people, I've got a, like a handful of backing tracks that do really good. And then I've got um, most of my, my gear videos end up doing like the the Cunefi pickups and my, my Tele Deluxe. Um, like that kind of thing or the stuff with the Strymon Iridium and my pedal board. Uh, those videos generally tend to do pretty good. Um, the video lessons I've done of like BB King solos, um, those have been pretty good too. Um, but they're not like, you know, setting the world on fire. Uh, just because like, it's funny, like when something new comes out, like all those guys that have really good channels like Pete Thorne and uh, Sean Tubbs and, and all those guys, they, they all seem to get like pre-release versions of it. And they all put out their videos at, like in the same day. <laughs> so, but with the fractal, I was kind of thinking because I, I don't like miking this amp because I don't have a really good miking situation. I, I'm I'm literally in my garage, um, like there's my garage door right there, and and so uh, if UPS comes, the dogs bark. Um, you know, if the neighbor's mowing his lawn. Sean, I, I don't know. Um, I know of Sean Tubbs. I know he was from around here, and we're kind of similar ages, all of us. Um, but I've never met him. I didn't know about him until, until uh, YouTube. But miking, miking my amp is kind of a drag. So I was kind of thinking, like, I could use the Fractal. And, and uh, like, uh, Brett Kingman seems to do a lot of that, where he uses his FM3 and just, you know, he gets a good, you know, amp sound and then does the pedal demo that way. Um and then you're not dealing with like having dogs barking on it. All my pre and the logic. I know you use like native instruments and stuff, if I remember correctly. I've got some. So I really like that Pete Thorne. Uh, they're actually having a sale on it. The the PT one hundred uh, Universal Audio thing on Brainworks. Uh, I did a demo of that. That sounds really good. If you if you need that sound. It's in the computer box. Yeah. Um, I've got some of that stuff. I have a hard time making that stuff sound as good as my amp. Um, I've got um, I've got waves, and I've got bias, two. Uh, and then I've got some of the brainwork stuff. Actually, Robert, I might I might do some of that stuff. There's so much content out there for that, but um, if you guys want to see me do stuff like especially like um with the stuff that you know i have um yeah, yeah i would uh, you know it'd be fun to do so that's that's an idea i could do some stuff like that that's what um yeah scott francisco's comment is is how good does it have to sound if it's uh if it's coming through a three inch speaker on somebody's phone or on on a <laughs> on a tv um so yeah, yeah, I, I, I get that part. Uh, I do like sending people um, guitar tracks where I've, I've recorded them and they can put their own sound. Like I, I did a, a country album for a friend in Norway and uh, I recorded everything using Bias and I sent him my finished tracks and then I sent him the plain tracks and then he ended up um, basically taking my plain tracks and ramping them through his rig and miking his rig there in his studio. 
Um, and it turned out pretty cool. It sounded pretty good. Yeah, uh, actually, the the rig rundown thing that'll be fun. A lot of guys do like the um, the whole blog deal, um, gig blog kind of thing. That might be kind of fun. Yeah, it's I guess with that when you're recording, it depends on who you're working with. Like I could send stuff to like Scott. He could do anything with it. You know, he's got everything there, whether it's cool amps or or digital things. Um, some people just need you know finished guitar sounds. I, I get that too. But I don't know it's just kind of weird. I was I was kind of like thinking that 2022 was going to be like me getting back to work as a <laughs> as a player as much as as a teacher. Um, so we'll see. But uh, I, I kind of want to start doing more live streaming content too. So maybe. Hey guys, I'm going to, uh, unless anybody had any specific questions, I'm probably going to go and have some dinner before I teach. I've got one, one student this evening. Um, and I'm going to uh, go do that. So um, probably next Monday, but keep an eye on, on, on my channel, on the YouTube channel. Uh, which is the Jack's Guitar Tracks channel. Uh, what I can do here. Yeah, it's dinner time around here, man. Whoops. Um, I mean, I, I try and do this stuff on all my social media, but uh, definitely um, keep an eye out. You'll start seeing more live streams from me. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, have a good night. Thanks, Tom, for the conversation. Everybody else for participating. I really do appreciate it. Um, and uh, next week, we'll probably have the, the Fractal FM3 uh, unboxing and fumble fest. And uh, I think that might be kind of fun. I've been, I've been researching it, so it won't be super fumbly. Uh, I've been watching other people's videos on it. But it's, it's always different to see like how this, this stuff works when you got it in your own hands. So, All right. Have a good night, guys. Thanks, David. Bye, Robert. Bye, Tom.